As a global industry, we have been constantly adapting, changing to meet the rising demand for energy. Energy consumption is around 50% greater today than it was 20 years ago. Just think about that. And we expect it to be some 40% greater 20 years from now than it is today. But there are more than enough resources to meet that demand. When I joined the industry, it had about 700 billion barrels of reserves in the world. And today, the world has about 1.7 trillion barrels of reserves. Thanks to advancing the capability and technology, our industry now operates onshore and offshore, shallow water and deep water, in conventional and now unconventional plays. The whole energy world is also undergoing its own massive change. We've just seen the oil price halved in a matter of weeks after three years of unusual stability around $100 a barrel. The dynamics of the industry have changed, and the industry is changing to meet the new realities of this market. If the energy, global energy environment was highly competitive at before at $100 a barrel, it just got ultra competitive at $50 to $60 a barrel. Strong long-term demand and abundant supply do not by themselves bring energy to the market. That requires investments that make sense for investors, operators, and host governments. And in today's world, instead of money chasing opportunities, we have opportunities chasing money. In this climate, we are particularly reminded that we are stewards of the business on behalf of our shareholders, and we have to look to their long-term interests. So the question for today is this, what is the formula to enable Mexico to attract large-scale investment as it opens up its energy market? And I think there are five key factors that apply really for all seasons, regardless of the oil price. And these factors are first, safe and reliable operations. Secondly, capital efficiency and project execution. Capability, people technology, and partnerships. Now, they're all fairly simple words. I'll talk about each one. So together, I think we can create an environment that I would describe as ultra-competitive, but highly collaborative. And I'd like to look at each one of these just briefly. Let me start with safe and reliable operations. Believe me, our experience tells us that safety and reliability are highly compatible. The two things go hand in hand, improve one and you improve the other, improve both and you generate greater value. And we believe our own recent experience in BP certainly bears that out. Four years ago, almost five years ago, we began resetting BP to build a safer, stronger, better performing business, somewhat smaller. We began in response to the tragic Deepwater Horizon accident in the Gulf of Mexico. We have reshaped BP. We have stayed in the deep waters of the world because we believe we can safely operate in a way that is good for all market conditions. We have focused on both processes and behaviors, and at the heart of the operating business is a single operating management system for hundreds of individual BP operations across about 80 countries. This operating management system helps us be more systematic, which leads to more simplicity, consistency, and compliance. And as simplicity, consistency, and compliance go up, so does performance on safety, reliability, and operating efficiency. Compared with 2010, the number of major process safety incidents we've had has fallen, the number of even very small leaks has fallen, and the recordable injury rate has fallen. And we've seen the trends in our reliability indicators going up as we want them to do. The result is a safer business and a business better able to generate value for our owners. And that links directly to the second factor, capital efficiency and project <laughs> execution. As the oil price falls, the pressure goes up. That's the pressure to generate maximum possible value from every dollar or peso that's spent in a project. This is an area where the industry's recent track record has not been the best. Last year, the analysts at ENY, don't know whether someone is here from ENY, but they did a very extensive study. They looked at oil and gas mega projects and found that two out of every three projects in the world were facing cost overruns. 
and three out of four were behind schedule. Faced with competition for investment from many other industries, as well as from within our own sector, we need to make the best possible choices from among the many opportunities to offer weighing the viability of every project against this new price environment. We need to look at standardizing equipment as much as possible. We need to work with suppliers to make the deflationary environment mutually beneficial. And we need to challenge every dollar we spend, drive efficiencies everywhere we can, and always strive for the flawless execution on projects and our day-to-day -day operations. This brings me to the third factor, capability. This is the human factor. The individuals, the teams, the networks within businesses that turn strategies into reality. This is the pool of knowledge, expertise, and experience behind the technologies and relationships and the systems and processes that ensure safe, reliable, and competitive operations. As Emilio Lozoya has said recently, engineering, operational, and management talents are the decisive elements in the race to be competitive. I share Amelia's view about the value in building talent rather than buying talent. And BP has been proud to support the building of talent in the Mexican energy sector <coughs> over many decades. We have welcomed the opportunity to offer joint training, which we have done on a non-commercial basis, not just in classrooms, but getting people out into the field as well, developing the intuitive feel that is so important for the best engineers, geologists, and technicians. Having a presence in the neighboring U.S. Gulf of Mexico for over 50 years now, we have experience in understanding the petroleum geology of the basin and its challenges. And I think that experience is one reason for Mexico's uh, interest in its deep water and BP's interest in the opportunities that may lie in the Mexican waters of the Gulf. And we have, I believe, a proven track record for our industry of capability in any oil province anywhere in the world has to be seen as a strong positive. It's the difference between a standing start and being handed a baton when you're already up and running at speed. As such, I think proven capability that closely matches the various opportunities has to be an important consideration for both countries and investors. Now, the fourth factor, technology. In fact, I think our industry is in the middle of a technical revolution at the moment. We're making great advances, and not just in the traditional areas of the physical sciences and engineering. We're also bringing in breakthroughs from outside our industry in digital and in robotics in particular, also in bioscience, nanoscience, and elsewhere. It's extraordinary. And as always been the case, advances in technology are central to the economics of our industry. In some ways, the seeds of the current volatility in the oil price were sown by technology breakthroughs several decades ago. The current resurgence in U.S. production and supply is entirely down to hydraulic fracturing using the technologies of directional drilling that were originally developed back in the 1940s, actually by a BP heritage company. Ever since then, technology has been giving us many new and more efficient options in the discovery, the recovery, and the production of energy. In terms of discovery, breakthroughs in seismic imaging in recent years have greatly increased the success rates of exploration. We've been specializing in subsalt seismic imaging that allows you to see beneath the deep salt canopies in the U.S. Gulf of Mexico in particular and elsewhere around the world like Angola. And over the last decade, we've made about 15 discoveries in the U.S. Gulf of Mexico, which is because of this ability to image these subsalt reservoirs. It's how we found some large fields, ones you might not have heard of, but Casquita and Tiber in the U.S. Gulf. And we're using this technology to unlock further potential in exploration plays globally. And there are breakthroughs in enhanced oil recovery from older reservoirs that are transforming what we thought was possible with mature reservoirs. So much so, in fact, that we have probably reached a point now globally in our industry when the potential for enhanced oil recovery from known hydrocarbon resources probably exceeds the potential from unknown resources from new discoveries. The days of assuming that two-thirds of any new discovery will be left in the ground are gone. 
in Prudhoe Bay for Alaska, in Alaska, for example, using enhanced oil recovery technologies to target around recovery rates of up to 60%. It's 5 billion barrels more than it was originally thought was ever possible. And that is the equivalent of discovering a whole new supergiant field. This is happening across the world in our industry. This is technology that could be very relevant for Mexico, for Mexico's mature giant fields. And then the industry has had extraordinary breakthroughs in the applications of digital technologies. The industry may have been a little slow off the mark, I have to say, compared with others, but we're making up ground fast. In our own portfolios, we're using digital sensors to improve safety at many plants and across thousands of miles of pipelines and lowering the cost at the same time. We're using sensors deep in the wells to improve drilling safety and efficiency and find what we call the sweet spots for production. We built the world's largest supercomputer for commercial use in Houston and it's currently capable of performing nearly 4,000 trillion calculations per second, and it runs 24 hours a day. And what that means is that level of power, when it's coupled with the latest 3D and 4D seismic imaging, it means that a geophysicist in a single day can perform the sort of work that would have taken four years just 10 years ago. We're kind of catching up with Silicon Valley, maybe a little bit. <laughs> slowly. <laughs> but that statistic alone gives you some idea of the potential of technology as a competitive force in very tough economic conditions. So the final factor is another revolution or at least a transformation. If we go back to when this industry was taking its shape early last century, a handful of international companies dominated the production of most of the world's oil. Then followed a time when national governments asserted their sovereignty, and today nearly 90% of the world's oil resources are controlled by national oil companies. So change continues, and we now have a new era taking shape, and I think it's an age of partnership and collaboration between national and international oil companies. Across the globe, we see partnerships where national and international oil companies come together, sharing the technical skills, sharing the expertise, the capability to produce national resources in a mutually beneficial relationship. And the reasons for these relationships is that they can achieve greater value than the sum of their parts. You see it all over the world. Relationships like these are transforming the discovery, recovery, and production of energy all over the world in Azerbaijan, in Angola, in Indonesia, in Iraq, in Oman, Abu Dhabi, India, China, many other places. And we're confident the same will be true in Mexico in the near future. The complexity of many of the world's great oil and gas mega projects mean they are beyond the resources and capabilities of any single organization. The key is mutually. Each partner brings their distinctive capabilities to achieve mutual benefits. For international oil companies, or the IOCs, our strengths lie in our skills, our expertise, our advanced technologies, and the rigid discipline expected by our investors. And national oil companies bring their own knowledge, capability, and local experience to bear. And governments can create the right conditions and environment for attracting investment with terms that offer fair and reasonable returns for all parties. <laughs> 